Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chassis Variant Series with myself, Critical Rocket, and now we're on to our 95 tonner assault mech for the clans, the Executioner, also known as the Gladiator within the Inner Sphere. Uh, this design is one of those really polarizing designs between its tabletop iteration and its in-game iteration. On the tabletop, the Executioner is quite an effective assault mech. Uh, for the clans, it, it gives them not only a very powerful mech at 95 ton with plenty of very, very uh, capable equipment, but it's also an assault mech that carries Mask, which at the time I believe was one of the few mechs to have run it. Uh, the system allows the mech to reach frightening speeds, and on tabletop it could mean that it could very quickly outpace uh, other assault mechs or some heavies and quickly reposition itself for a shot that you wouldn't normally expect it to be able to reach on the board, and for that reason the Executioner was used as a kind of flanking assault. I guess it could be described maybe as the clan's version of a charger, with basically a high speed assault mech that has uh, the benefit though of not just carrying uh, five small lasers. So the Executioner is very good on tabletop, it's effective. In Mech Warrior Online however it suffers. It's a mech that hasn't really taken hold with many fans of the game and I can see why. Your main issues with the Executioner are pretty apparent. It's very tall, so one of its first problems is that it does end up sticking out over the top of a lot of terrain, and its profile is extremely distinct at range, there's not many other assault mechs that quite look like that. So this creates a bit of an issue, because the mech CT is massive. The hitboxes for the side torsos are very small by comparison, so you never need to really worry about losing your side torsos because 90% of the damage coming into, your, into the torso area of your mech is going to go to the CT. Unfortunately, this leads into a problem that the Executioner suffers, which is that unless you sacrifice some of the weaponry on board the mech, you will be running with less armor than your average 90 to 95 ton assault. One of the downsides of the Executioner is that to have some of the equipment, such as mask and a lot of the weaponry it carries, is it sacrifices armor, and so its base stats for an Omni mech aren't great for protection. The other issues that it suffers is that it has LSAS, low slung arm syndrome. Uh, this is particularly apparent with this mech, which means you also have to expose far more of your body when you're trying to fight and cover than you would normally. Uh, this does create a, a very a very uh, regular and frustrating issue of having to uh, move up a little bit more to compensate for any of the hills and the such, especially on maps like Tourmaline, uh, Grim Plexus and the such, because you'll end up just firing when you think you've got a good shot and you end up just plowing all of your energy weapons into the ground. So yeah, the Executioner is not popular. Uh, you won't see many of them in MWO, and if you do, it's usually somebody who's trying out a new build or trying to make them work, especially when there was new tech available like the ATMs and the such. But I just don't think, sadly, it was ever really going to take hold that well. However, this is the alpha version, and this is pretty much a definition of a pulse boat. If you like your pulse lasers, the alpha is a pretty powerful mech. It's got three large pulse, four, I think it's uh, three, yeah, three large pulse and four medium, ER mediums, and then it's got two machine guns. Uh, these are split between uh, the arms, uh, three in the left arm, four in the right arm for a total of seven energy hard points, and it has two ballistics in the right torso. So if you wanted to turn it into a pulse boat, it could very easily work that way. As I said, your side torsos are unlikely to get blown off, and many people don't even bother shooting the arms on a gladiator, it's all CT damage. Uh, the other thing to take into account is that it's its mask is integrated, so you will want to make regular use of that. Uh, in MWO at least, the mask does allow you to very quickly reach top speed uh, to uh, reposition yourself, because normally, uh, <laughs> if you didn't use it, the, the thing is sluggish as hell, even with speed tweaks uh, unlocked and other uh, skills that will slightly increase your max speed uh, for the mech, or how quickly you reach max speed, they just don't really help it that much, it does suffer. Without the mask it is in trouble. So yeah, still the, the ballistics in the side torso are useful because they're higher mounted than the arm uh, weapons, which means at least if you do decide to mount anything more significant there, you're going to have a half decent uh, range shot, but uh, I don't know, it's not really the main reason you would purchase this mech. It's all energy loadout primarily is useful. It's got enough heat to hand, uh, heat sinks to handle it, which is surprising. But yeah, you can fire the ER mediums and the large pulses a few times before you're close to overheating. That's a lot of damage you can dump out. 
Um, the mech has jump jets as well, so it's actually half decent at being able to quickly navigate some of the terrain or be able to hop over smaller obstacles, especially in conjunction with the mask when you do need to very quickly um, sort of catch up to somebody or maybe get in close for that kill shot. So yeah, uh, I would, if <laughs> it's difficult because overall it's a difficult chassis to recommend over, you know, in general because compared to some of the other clan assaults out there, it doesn't hold up as well. And compared to some of the Inner Sphere assaults that it's going to be going up against, some Inner Sphere assaults far outpace it uh, in terms of combat performance. So it's it's tough, but it, as a base for customization, the execution is actually pretty good. Uh, the omnipods that are available to it uh, range in the likes of being able to have as few missile pods, but its best asset is its energy hard points. Uh, one of the variants, a right arm, has seven energy hard points alone, and there are multiples that come with uh, threes and twos uh, split between the arms and side torsos. So. Uh, the mech it does have a lot of potential there if you want to uh, go really deep with the customization and come up with a build that works for you. Otherwise, yeah, it's um, it's a it's a tough sell. I'll admit that it it doesn't really um, it's not going to light anyone's fire. It's expensive as well, uh, a 95 ton. It, you for for that for the cash that you're paying out for this, you could probably get yourself something like a supernova or even go 5 ton heavy and get a Kodiak and probably get better performance overall. For what it is, stock, it's okay. And if you just want to try out a new mech, the Alpha is a pretty decent start point for an executioner. However, I wouldn't massively recommend this, this mech overall. It's a shame, because it's quite powerful normally, it has a history of being a, a rather deadly assault mech, but in terms of mech in line, sadly, it just doesn't stack up um, it, in a live environment, uh, in a sort of arcade, uh, real-time environment. It just doesn't have the survivability. I don't know. Maybe if PGI came back to it one day and gave it uh, a sort of overhaul, maybe fixed up its its hit boxes or something, it might be a bit more desirable, uh, maybe a bit more uh, useful. But currently, I think you'd be very hard pushed to see many executioners in uh, quick play or things like faction play and the such. It's just, it's, it's just too easy to get called out. So that was that. Uh, that was the executioner A. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you have a good one. I'll see you next time. Bye.